Hey everybody and welcome back. You know we like to get into some pretty fascinating, but sometimes heavy stuff on this show. That's right. And uh, today we're going to be tackling something. Yeah. That's really important. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a sensitive topic, but I think it's one that needs to be talked about more. For sure. Um, and that is domestic violence. Yeah. So this is something that's been in the news a lot lately, and I know you've been following this as well. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Sunny Austin from The View, you know? Oh, yeah. She had some really insightful things to say after that Chris Brown documentary. Yeah, the one about a history of violence, right? Exa exactly, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, it's a tough one to watch for sure. It is, and, and you know what really struck me was what she said about how this isn't just a celebrity problem, right? Right. This is something that's happening everywhere. Yeah, she made a really good point about that. This is an epidemic. It is. It really yeah. is an epidemic, but it's hidden. It's hiding in plain sight. Exactly. And so that's what we're going to try to do today is kind of unpack mm -hmm. why it is that this stays hidden. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, what can we do yeah. to help? Yeah. I mean, the fact that it's hidden, that's what makes it so insidious. Right. It's like it can thrive in the darkness. Yeah. You know, in, in the research that I was doing for this episode, um, I came across this article that was talking about how silence oh, yeah. is a huge part of this problem. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's what allows it to continue. It does. You know, the source we're looking at actually calls it like the foundation of domestic yeah. violence, that it, it needs secrecy and isolation. It's like a breeding ground almost. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that that's something that's really hard for people to wrap their heads around, right? It is. Like, why don't victims just speak up? Right, like, why is it so hard? Yeah to break that silence. Well, I think I think part of it is just fear. Yeah. You know, fear of retaliation, mm -hmm. fear of not being believed even. Right. And and maybe even just like shame. Oh, absolutely. And there's this stigma. Yeah, there's a huge stigma around it yeah. that prevents people from coming forward. And it's not just the victims who are afraid. Right. Sometimes it's the people around them. Yeah. You know, their friends and family. Like they don't know what to do. Exactly. They're afraid of making things worse. Right. So they just stay silent too. Yeah. And and this is what makes it so difficult to identify, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not always obvious. Exactly. It's not always like black eyes and bruises. Right. It can be much more subtle than that. Yeah. Like I was reading about this concept called gaslighting. Oh, yeah. Gaslighting is really insidious. It is where like the abuser will manipulate the victim mm. into doubting their own sanity. Yeah. And it makes it so hard for the victim to even realize what's happening. Right. Like they start to question. Yeah. Their own reality. Their own perceptions, their own memories. Wow. It's really messed up. It is. And, and you know, it's... Scary to think about how many people are going through this. It, it is. The stats are really alarming. They are. Like one in four women. It's a lot of people. It is a huge number. And and men too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. One in seven men will experience this. It's just, it's, it's a big problem and we need to be talking about it more. We do. And that brings us to, I think, the most important part of this conversation. Which is, well. What can we do yeah. to help? Right, like what can we do as individuals? Yeah, like if we suspect that someone we know mm -hmm. is in this kind of situation. Yeah. What are the signs? What should we look for? Well, oh. Sunny Hostin actually talked about this, too. You know, she said, we need to learn to recognize the signs. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's so important because, like we said, it's not always obvious. Right. But there are some red flags. Like what? Well, like, for example, is the person constantly walking on eggshells? Around their partner. Yeah. Like they're always afraid of saying or doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Or are they withdrawing from their friends and family? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, like they're isolating themselves. Mm. Or are they making excuses? For their partner's behavior. Exactly. Like they're always trying to downplay yeah. the abuse. Those are all really good kinds. Yeah. And, and if you see these things, it's important to take them seriously. Okay, so let's say you do see those signs. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, the first thing is to approach the person with empathy. Oh, okay. And understanding... Not judgment? Uh, no, definitely not judgment. Okay. You want to let them know that you're there for them. That you care. Yeah, that you care and that you believe them mm -hmm. and that you're not going to judge them. Okay. But you also have to remember that you can't force someone to leave right. an abusive situation. It's ultimately up to them. Exactly. Okay. But what you can do is provide support. You can be a listening ear. Mm -hmm. You can help them to come up with a safety plan. A safety plan? Yeah. What's that? Well, it's basically a plan for how to get out of the situation safely okay. if they decide to leave. Right. You know, it might include things like packing a bag, mm -hmm. 
having a safe place to go, knowing who to call for help. That's really important. It is. And you can also connect them with resources. Like what kind of resources? Well, there are hotlines, okay. support groups, shelters, yeah. right. counseling services. Wow. There's a lot out there. There is, yeah. And how do you find these resources? Well, you can start by doing a Google search okay. for domestic violence resources in your area. Mm. You can also call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Okay. And they can connect you with local resources. Got it. And and I think the most important thing is just to remember that you're not alone. Mm. There are people who care. Yeah. And there is help available. And, you know, speaking of help available, yeah, we need to dismantle this stigma. We do. It's a huge barrier it is. to people getting help. Yeah. I mean, the article that I read was saying that the stigma mm -hmm. is like a wall it is. that prevents survivors yep. from coming forward. Yeah. And it's perpetuated by all these myths and misconceptions. Like what is... Well, like, you know, the idea that domestic violence only happens to certain types of people yeah. or that it's always physical right. or that victims are somehow to blame. Yeah, I've heard that one. Yeah, and, and these myths are just not true. Right. Domestic violence can happen to anyone. Yeah. Regardless of their age, race, gender, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status. It doesn't discriminate. Exactly. And, and it can take many forms. Right. It's not just physical. It can be emotional, verbal, psychological, financial. No. And, and victims are never to blame. Never. Never. Okay. So how do we, how do we dismantle this stigma? Well, I think it starts with education. Okay. We need to educate ourselves and others about the realities of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. We need to challenge those harmful myths and misconceptions. Right. And we need to create a culture yeah. where survivors feel safe to speak up. Like a culture of belief. Exactly. A culture of belief and support. This is a really powerful conversation. It is. Um, and it's really got me thinking, yeah. what can I do <laughs> mm -hmm. to help make a difference? I'm so glad you asked that because yeah. that's the question I want to leave you with today. Okay. What is one concrete step mm -hmm. that you can take yeah. to help raise awareness okay. or support survivors of domestic violence? It could be something small. It could be something small, yeah. like educating yourself further on the resources available in your community mm. or donating to a local shelter okay. or even just starting a conversation with a friend about this very topic. Yeah. Remember, breaking the silence is the first step toward breaking the cycle of violence. So powerful. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me. This is something that we all need to be talking about. Absolutely. So spread the word. Yeah. Let's make a difference. We can do this. Together. Together. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.